Hello, Power Fans. I'm Methodical, and joining me for round three with Affinity. Our opening hand looks pretty good. Uh, we're going to have a turn one play with Flare Husk or Springleaf Drum. And then turn two, if we have a land at any point, we'll be able to play Carap Carapace Forger into the other one. So it looks really good to me. Of course, if we don't draw that second land, then it's going to be a little bit slow since we've got to wait for the Flare Husk and the Springleaf Drum to be online before we can start casting our two drops. But we will keep it and see how it goes. Getting Kataxian Probed, our opponent does know what we're on, and Island into Delver of Secrets. At this point, it's kind of hard to tell if our opponent's going to be on Blitz or on uh, Tribe. So we're just going to have to wait for at least one more card to kind of see what's going on here. Mountain, so now we know opponent is on Blitz. So we're going to try and play around accordingly. Uh, we do have our combo kill with Atog plus Teamer Battle Rage, but it would have been really nice to be able to play the Atog this turn instead of having to kind of sit and wait. Uh, we do want a Galvanic Blast, this Delver of Secrets, to reduce the clock on us. Uh, our opponent did show a Teamer Battle Rage, so I'm not too worried about this attack. I had an, uh, an upkeep stop set, so that way we could have removed it if it was a counter spell of some sort. I'm going to go ahead and take the damage. Uh, the reason why... Our opponent was on 3 mana, so if they had played either a Fiend or a Cyclops, I would have rather removed the, one of those. But since they didn't, I'm just going to go ahead and try and remove the Aberration, but our opponent does have the Dispel. Still not drawing our land, we're going to go ahead and get the Carapace Forger online. Unfortunately, our hand is turning out a lot clunkier than we had hoped. So this Delver is putting sufficient pressure on us. Cyclops means we may just be dead no matter what we do, so we're going to go ahead and get this Atog online. Even if our opponent has, like we know the opponent has the Teen or Battle Rage, so they cast a bunch of spells, the Atog might be able to buy us a turn. We're just going to kind of see. Throw the Atog in the way, we're expecting a Teen or Battle Rage here, it comes through. So the only way for us to survive is to sack essentially our entire board. So we might as well do that. What are our outs? Uh, nothing, but we're just going to go ahead and uh, attack anyway. Send that message, 2 damage, take our beats, and die. Alright, let's jump on over to game number 2. Taking a quick look at the sideboard. Uh, we are going to want to have counter magic, so we're going to want the Hydro Blast, we're going to want the Pyro Blast, that will help us remove their creatures. And the Metallic Rebuke might be a little clunky, so I'm going to swap one of those for like a Dispel. Uh, we are going to take out a one of the lands. We're lowering our curve, I think. Yeah, because we're going to be taking out the two flings. Um, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to use the flings if our opponent has counter magic. Like, they have dispels and stuff, so using a fling is really risky in the face of even one blue mana. I don't want to risk that. Uh, we're also going to take out the one flare husk. Those are fairly easy to take out and trim a little bit on those. So two flare husks, or one flare husk, two flings, and a land for the counter spells, and one metallic rebuke for a dispel, and let's see how that works. In our opening hand, uh, while we don't have much in the way of colored sources, we've got like the one chromatic star. This is a great hand, being able to just kind of unload our hand really quickly, since we're going to be able to just. Yeah, you'll see. It's it's a great hand. Go ahead and get down a Flare Husk. Next turn, we're going to be able to play Chromatic Star plus Frogmite, so it looks good to me. Going to send in for the, the one damage. I don't expect our opponent to block, and indeed they don't. Our opponent doesn't reveal anything, so that's good for us. And here, we're just going to kind of... Drawing an extra land is great, because now we get to unload both of those creatures. We'll get in for the damage, and then we might as well just cast this Care Forger as well. So, yeah, the, the turn 3 triple four, 4 plan, that's what we're going to do. Lose one of our guys to a smash. Electrostack Bolt, that's very surprising to me out of that, this sideboard, but hey, it kills one of our creatures. Gonna get in for our 7 damage. We don't mind the backswing at all here, and with the Galvanic Blast, things are looking pretty good for us. Our opponent does find a, find a spell pierce, so we just won't be casting this Galvanic Blast on their turn, with uh, so little mana up. Opponent has a Nivix Cyclops. What we're gonna do here is, since they don't have counter magic available, 
we're going to attack with everybody. Uh, I expect our opponent to not block the Carapace Forager, instead block one of the creatures on the side. If they do that, we win. And our opponent goes for the killing of the germ, so we will win the game. Excellent. Jumping on over to game number three. I decide I want even more counter magic, so I end up bringing in the Metallic Rebuke that I had taken out for the team or Battle Rage. Uh, once again, since they have a lot of counter magic for instant speed stuff, I just decide I want even more counter magic than they have, so yeah, we'll try it like that. And this hand, I don't like it. Uh, we don't have a turn one play. Unless we draw a land, we don't have a turn two play. We do have one interaction, but this hand does not get there without help. So we are going to send it back. We can do better. And unfortunately, our six uh, card hand is not better. So we'll send this one back as well. And this is better than both of our previous hands. We're going to go ahead and keep this. We've got Interaction plus two turn one plays, Galvanic Blast, keeping it. We're going to need some help off the top. Uh, Frogmite, I am going to keep this. Uh, it is essentially a free card we can play and just kind of gets a little bit of pressure on our opponent if they don't have a lot going on. So it is a game plan. We're, yep, not the best game plan, but we'll try it. Our opponent gets to see our lovely five, five card hand, and they're gonna be able to play around it as best as much as they want. We're gonna go ahead and get our stuff online with the flare husk tapping or the uh, the germ tapping to get our frog down. So we've got our pressure, killed fiend. We're just gonna try and get rid of that spell pierce. Well, <laughs> taking advantage of the fact that we mold, that's fine. But since we do have ways of getting rid of it, we're just gonna do that. Our opponent has the Cyclops. We don't really have much in the way of interaction with that. Uh, so there we did have an option of either playing the Prophetic Prism, hoping to get lucky with something off the top, playing the Carapace Forger with the intent of blocking the Cyclops, hoping they don't have the team or Battle Rage to kill us, or the Atog, but of course playing the Atog means if they attack and we block the Atog, we'd have to sack a lot of our stuff. So since we're not in the best position, we have to play to our outs. And our out here is that our opponent doesn't have a way of killing us. Uh, that They would be able to kill us if they had, let's see, two different spells plus Team or Battle Rage. That wouldn't quite kill us, but it would be close enough. I think they need one free spell to get there. Yeah, let's see. We just gotta kinda hope. So here we're just gonna be keeping an eye on what our opponent is doing. And if they're choosing to shuffle, that is good news for us. It means they likely don't have the team or battle rage and are digging for it. So we're just going to chuck the Carapace Forger in front. It works. So our opponent does have a backup Cyclops here. Um, so we're going to start doing the count. we got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Plus 1 is 13. If we draw a land or an artifact we can cast next turn, we do have the win if they don't have a blocker for the Atog. So since we know our opponent didn't have the team or battle rage last turn, we're just going to have to hope that our opponent doesn't have it this turn, so let's keep an eye on what happens. Opt. Uh, what are they doing? Putting on the bottom. Okay. They probably don't have it yet. Ponder. What do they do? They choose to shuffle. Alright, they probably still don't have it. Opting again. If they have it here where we lose, they put it on the bottom. So it means they would have had to blind draw it. And if they did blind draw it, we only survive if we block the Atog. If they didn't draw it, however, we can just get in the front with this Germ Token. So we're going to play Door out. We're going to throw the Germ Token away. And it works. Okay, so now we just need a land or an artifact we can cast to win this. And Atog doesn't quite do it. So we're going to hope we draw something off the Predictivism. We're just going to hope, maybe. And we draw the land. All right, so now we win. Whew, barely got there. Nice and close. We're going to get the Atog out there just because, why not? But it's just a matter of us being able to attack the Atog and hit them for 15. 
And that's how it is to play Affinity on a multi five. You just kind of cross your fingers and hope you just barely get there. Close one. All right, so we did manage to win round three. We're currently three and zero, oh, and I'll see you in round four.